This is the Maruti Suzuki Celerio diesel. It's the first ever diesel engine which has been completely designed in-house by Maruti Suzuki engineers. Well, the Celerio diesel is a car which should excite the bank manager in you or the accountant in you simply because it delivers a fuel efficiency figure of 27.6 kpl. Well, sorry if I got a little excited over there. But you know, that is the kind of figure which can put a lot of premium bike owners to shame when it comes to pure running cost. But is the Celerio as exciting to drive or as exciting to live with as that fuel efficiency figure is? We'll find out on the show today. Celerio's cabin is a great place in terms of overall space as well as comfort. As you can see, headroom is massive over here in the front seats and these seats also adjust for height, which is a good thing for uh, someone who is shorter. In terms of uh, practicality, it's a pretty decent cabin. You get two cup holders right over here between uh, the front passenger seats. You also get a tray where you can keep your wallet as well as cell phone. And there's also a small tray over here just below the AC vent on the right side to keep your cell phone in it. And along with all that, the glove box is a, a pretty useful size as well. So that means that there are plenty of places where you can keep your odds and ends inside the Celerio's cabin. In terms of the cabin quality, it's a pretty decent place to be in. And uh, these hard wearing plastics should age well. And they are at par with most of its rivals and decent enough for this category and at this price point. The boxy shape on the outside of the Celerio gives it a lot of room inside the cabin. And just like the petrol version of the car, this one is no different. As you can see, headroom is uh, pretty generous and knee room is adequate as well. And I have got a place below the front seats where I can stretch my feet at. So even if somebody is uh, over six feet tall and wants to sit upright in the back seat of the Celerio, it should not be too much of an issue. Well, the seats are decent in terms of cushioning and the seat scob is uh, pretty wide and pretty long as well. So that means that under thigh support is uh, good. And uh, this is a good car for those long journeys. And the floor panel is pretty flattish. There's a little bit of a hump, but it's not too much. And what that means is that whoever's sitting here should not really be struggling for leg room with the co-occupants. In terms of practicality, you get a pocket to keep your files and other knickknacks behind the front passenger seat. You also get one bottle holder over here and the door bins are large enough to house those big one liter bottles from your home. And along with that roomy cabin, you also get a very spacious boot. And even though it's not the biggest in this segment, it is at par with its rivals. If you want to improve the capacity further, you can also split the backs of these seats and uh, fold them down. And even though there's a bit of a lip over here, it's not too much of an issue if you have larger boxes to move, if you are planning to do house shifting inside this car. Well, here I'm now driving the new Celerio diesel and this car of course comes with an 800cc two-cylinder engine. It develops about 47 bhp of power and 125 nm of torque. Now those figures are pretty respectable uh, considering its size and the category it is in. Well with that kind of power it's pretty adequate for most city dwellers. It's an engine which uh, is pretty adequate for day to day use. But of course if you are someone who drives on the highway you will miss uh, that little bit of extra power and want it to be uh, more punchy. Well just like uh, other compact diesel engines this one also suffers from a lot of turbo lag uh, below 2000 rpm and uh, the engine is very lazy to respond to throttle inputs below 2000 rpm. Once of course you do cross that 2000 uh, rpm mark, there's a lot of torque available all the way up to 4000 rpm. So if you manage to keep it between 2 and 4000 rpm, you will be rewarded with a satisfying driving experience. But of course, if it falls below that figure, you will have to constantly be shifting gears to get the maximum from this engine. Well, that constant shifting of gears should not really be too much of an issue because this gearbox is one of the better ones in this uh, segment and uh, at this price point. The throws are accurate, pretty slick and effortless as well. Well, that slick gearbox along with a light clutch means that changing gears on the Celerio diesel is a breeze and something which should not be really too much of an issue. Well, because we are so used to refined uh, diesel engines from Maruti now in the Swift as well as the Desire, the Celerio comes across as a bit of a disappointment in terms of refinement. It's a little loud inside the cabin, but uh, it's at par for course considering uh, the compact size of the engine as well as the fact that uh, it's a very uh, affordable car and also 
the kind of class it is in. Remember its main rival is the Chevrolet B diesel and that car also makes similar levels of noise inside the cabin so this car really isn't that much different or uh, disappointing in that sense. Well yes the Celerio cannot match the Swift diesel for refinement inside the cabin but do remember the Swift diesel has been the benchmark in terms of performance as well as refinement in that category. So expecting the Celerio diesel to be filling up the Swift's boots is a bit of a tough task isn't it? But in terms of handling, there is a little bit of body roll in the Celero Diesel's uh, chassis. But that said, uh, the steering wheel is pretty accurate and the car feels pretty agile for daily needs inside the city. Well, despite those minor shortcomings, the Celero Diesel remains the best car out there for anyone who wants an inexpensive, easy on the wallet and very affordable car to motor around town on a daily basis. And before you start a debate with me on that, I'll end this video review right now.